In this lecture, we'll take a look at how Meteor actually works. So there are two sides of it, one being the client, the other is server along with the database. So whenever the browser requests for a page from the server, the server will basically return an empty skeleton of that page along with some JavaScript code which will establish the communication and then fetch the required data and populate the page. And how this actually happens is, as soon as the request is received by the server, the server tries to establish a WebSocket connection. And if the browser supports WebSocket, it establishes that connection. Otherwise, it will try to mimic the WebSocket connection by having some fallback options like making XHR request which will mimic WebSocket by continuous polling method. So once the connection is established using WebSocket, this allows the server to push data to the client. And it does so by making use of distributed data protocol. So the communication is actually happening by making use of this protocol, which supports publisher and subscription-based messaging and remote procedure calls. The other thing is, Meteor is able to access the MongoDB database directly using this mechanism. There's a library called MiniMongo, which is also loaded in the page. And the Meteor application can make use of this library to communicate directly to the MongoDB database. And that's how the whole request and response works in a real-time fashion when we make use of Meteor.